Okay. It's Thursday, October 29, 2020 at 9 a.m. Call the meeting order. Call the roll, please. Barons? Here. All? Here. All Here. Sure? Yep. Got a copy of the agenda in front of you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Sticknast, is there a second? Mrs. Alpha, are there any questions on the agenda? Seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 All same sign. That motion passes. Are there any public comments this morning? Seeing none, we'll move to the committee chair reports. Mr. Barons, Management Services and Judicial. Uh, management Services, we're going to, since we don't know what the board's going to decide, we're going to go over contracts for Head Start. So that if, ready, if they decide to leave them here, if they decide not to, then I guess we don't. Um, and then probably talk about some more issues with space in the building. Okay, and judicial? Uh, regular reports. Okay, Mrs. Alford, help. Yeah, uh, we'll have a regular report along with the television. Okay, Mr. Signal tax. Department head reports, and then we need to be working on the uh, weather. Okay, very good. Finance, Mr. Hall. I don't know what normal business, I guess. Our Mr. Chairman isn't here. You're not going to approve the budget? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we posted it, so we, we, we should approve it, yes, this month. Thank you. Highway. <coughs> Mr. Hall, highway. Okay, we need to look over an environmental in, in impact statement, regular claims. We would like to have the commission move it to meeting to this building right where we're sitting today. As far as I'm concerned, I have no problem with coming here. I think that's an excellent idea under the circumstances. Please notify the, the committee that we moved here, here again today. I mean, here again for this coming meeting. And we'll take care of that and make sure the room is reserved too. Okay, I don't have any chairman comments this morning, so we'll move on to the EMA report. Over the past month, I've been working on the mass notification system, um, working on an after action report, an improvement plan concerning county operations and pandemic so far. Um, collected a new batch of emergency response guides to push out every four years by the Illinois Emergency Management Agency. I attended the annual crisis plan meeting for the Coy West School District and as always continue to work on the pandemic. On the 14th of October, I got a chance to finally use the mass notification system that's been purchased. There was large field fires west of Danforth, and I simply used the system to alert the surrounding area to stay clear of the area. The fire crews would not be disturbed, and they continued to respond. I just wanted to show you how the system worked that day. In short, I got onto the system and drew a quick map. Centered in that map, roughly, is where the fires were. And I typed a quick, out, quick message, get pushed it out in English and Spanish to the area, to all landlines in the area, and all people that have uh, voluntarily signed up with their cell phones. In total, within about five minutes after I pressed go, it called 1,381 1, phone contacts to let them know to stay clear of the area. And that's how the system works in this situation. So I just want to provide that example to you so you know how it works, how it has worked. I plan on doing a countywide test maybe in December, but I want to do some more planning on that. And uh, so we'll see you later about that. You can still sign up for the account. Yes, you can. You know what? Just for you, 
Mr. Olds? I get one of those. Oh, you sure you don't want another? I get another. Exactly where it is. No, that's it. And yes, you can still sign up. 439 total sign ups in Iroquois County so far. I believe I signed up, but I've been missing. Are you in that area? Which area? Area not now. I'm in Gilman. That depends on uh, party. I didn't include all of Gilman in the okay. area. I included, I just encompass US 24. So if you're on the south side, you're on the Well, I'm on the north side. Okay, well, I'll look into it to see if you got it. Any questions about how this works? How it could work in the future? You yeah. said you had over 1,000 phone calls. Yes. But you said there's only been 439 cell phone signups in countywide. Yes. The reason for the over 1,000 phone calls is because landlines are already in the system. Well, I understand that, but that must mean there's an awful lot of landlines within the area that you got designated. Right? Yes, there is. And sometimes it's multiple man lines in this building. Uh, this particular call incorporated num uh, a good portion of the business district in Gilman. So a number of those are multiple man lines to one building. Just as an example. But then it also incorporated every single landline in all the residences in that area. Not a lot of people use a landline anymore, but enough people do, and enough businesses do, that it makes quite significant. But to me, the message is, is to try and put together a plan or a way to get all the cell phone users signed up too, because I, I would think based upon reports that we get from 911 and so forth, that we have more cell phones than we do landlines. Absolutely. So I think, I think I'm, you know, I guess we don't really know how many people within this area didn't get notified that that's because they have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would think that it might be quite a few. Yes. Uh, from what I've noticed in other counties that roll out a similar system um, that had voluntary sign up for cell phones like we do currently, it takes a few years to get a lot of cell phones signed up. So continually throughout this time, whenever I go to meet, I bring these pamphlets with me tell people about it and uh, I'll be doing more press, more social media about it. I already did a press release about it. It's just going to take some time and we'll keep pushing. So what events do you use it for? Well, um, severe weather is the obvious one. Um, whether it's a tornado or straight line winds, um, flooding potentially. We're expecting flooding in this area by tomorrow morning. You should prepare. Uh, we could use it for, let's say, a truck of anhydrous ammonia spills over in a residential area and it's leaking. We could send it out for that. We could, just like we did here, draw a map and say, hey, you should evacuate. We could potentially use it for um, a loose perpetrator that's running around the neighborhood. Um, and I plan on sharing this with other emergency response agencies so that way it's not just me pushing up alerts. The more authorized individuals that and push out alerts, I think the more useful the system will be. That's a great idea. In short, I wanted to see, I wanted to show you what your money is paid for. Uh, I really uh, and I think, and I think that's kind of what we're identifying is that it, in this day and age when radio and newspapers coverage for these kinds of things seem to be somewhat diminished or not as effective as we might otherwise hope it would be that something like this is probably a much more effective tool and I would like to see if we could like I said if we could put together some sort of a, a plan maybe it's nothing more than making up posters to post on billboards and around the county and in different locations where they have community type billboards um, Whatever whatever ideas somebody might have to further promote getting people signed up, I think is what I'm kind of trying to get at. I hear you. Okay. Uh, because mm -hmm. the, the easier we can make it, or the you know, 
this is what you do one, two, three, or whatever mm -hmm. to get signed up. I think you know, we'll get a, a much better response from people once they realize what it can do for them and, and how easy it is to sign up. I agree. So I, I guess my, my charge to you would be to see if you can put something like that together. And, you want to come back to us for help or whatever it takes, but uh, I think that's what we ought to be doing, we're moving in that direction. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, anybody else have anything for Mr. Stacy? Yeah, I got a question. How? What is the procedure to sign up? <laughs> There's a few different ways you can sign up. You can call a phone number and call the prompts. You can text the same phone number and just call the prompts. You could, uh, there's a QR code in that pamphlet that you could scan and take you right to the web page. Or if you don't have a QR scanner on your phone, you can just mainly type in the web page on your smartphone or computer. And you can sign up there. Or you could uh, download the app on your phone. Or I could tell Alexa to sign up. Or you could tell if you have an Alexa device in your home, you could just say, hey, sign up for these alerts. Um, that's. Uh, one of the one of the special features of this contractor that we went with is they're starting to get into smart devices and homes. I'll try that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, if you have a smart TV, can you do it that way too? Or not? Um, I don't know. Um, it depends on what what kind of smart TV you have. I don't have one. <laughs> There's a number of different. <laughs> Manufacturers that make their smart TVs, TVs. If it's Amazon based, potentially, I'm not sure. Okay. So I might get one. Okay, next on the agenda, we got a discussion and action on disposable of unusable furniture and equipment. I believe this is something that we approved at a previous meeting, but we did not really put together any type of plan or dates. Or, or what have you to, to do this. And I think that's what what I have in mind of uh, having us do here this morning is to uh, put something together. Amanda, have you gotten any information or indication from how much we're, stuff we're looking at or what, is, what it is? Most offices just have chairs, so the extra chairs sitting around in their office or broken chairs. Um, I know Brian has some items she's not in here, she'll get them later. Um, but I don't know, I don't have a list of her items, if it's desks or if it's just additional chairs. Probation, I think, is the office that has the largest items. They have a couple of large wooden desks with the touches. Um, but other than that, I think it's just chairs. As you can see, we have a lot of, an abundance of chairs that people would like to get rid of that are just hanging around the offices. Uh, and then at the end of this hallway, are those the health department desks? I haven't had a chance to talk to them. We plan on using those. Do they plan on using those? Okay. Yes. Um, I wasn't sure about that one, but otherwise, uh, as we're at the courthouse, they they mostly have chairs. Um, talking with Sandy and the sheriff's office, same thing, but she said the more that they look, they'll probably come up with some more items, kind of like the recycling the beds. They started with a small list, but then the list grew and grew. So, it, as far as you can tell, is most of the stuff damaged, or is some of it still usable? Or? Um, some stuff is damaged. Some stuff I think is can probably be kept. It's just that they don't use it. So I think we we would just have to take a look at it and see if uh, maybe it can be used in another department. And maybe that's part of what we should decide today if we want to take all of these stuff that is unusable and put it in one pile or whatever and then things that are usable can at least give people an opportunity from other departments right. to see if they can use it but then we'd have to decide do we want to take it upstairs and keep it for a while for, for future possibilities or do we want to dispose of it I guess it, I guess that's a possibility, but it probably would depend on how much stuff we're talking about. We just have a couple of desks and so forth. It sounds like mostly what we got are chairs. 
And like all those chairs back there, and we had them out in the hallway, and I've got some extras in my, put in my office just to get them out of the way. And, you know, I really don't know. So those chairs back there, when we were set up before the virus, a lot of, a lot of our meetings, most of those chairs were occupied. So we probably don't want to get rid of them, but at the same time right now, they're in the way. I don't know. I don't know that there's any other chairs around that would be better suited for that purpose. My guess is probably not. There might be better chairs, but I think for the purpose that those are filled, that, that's pretty good because they're lightweight and you move them around pretty easy and that sort of thing. And they're not they're not totally uncomfortable either. So this is something. One of the reasons I got it on here today is because we're approaching winter. I think this is something we want to try and get taken care of before the winter weather comes. So, uh, you know, Chris Drake is already aware of, of this project and is willing one way or the other. I don't know if he's twisted his arm or if he's volunteered one way or the other. He's going to be one of the main individuals as far as the moving of the stuff and, and so forth. So. Charlie, it's one reason why we need to move it. It's a case of emergency. We have to evacuate each office. They'd be in the way. They ought to be set up away from the hallways to keep them clear. Well, I, I guess that's a good point. We do have quite a few things in the hallways right now. Yeah, they stumble over them, and that, those things that wind up in the middle of the hallway, other people would fall over them. So one of the things that are in the hallway are some, some of the office holders putting putting some of their things out in the hallway to advance their services or however they want to meet meet their customers or spy and tell whatever you want to call it. What are you looking for? Well I guess I'm I'm looking for us to put together some kind of a plan or how we'd like to go about doing this. Amanda's already done quite a bit of work, as you can tell, from finding out what people have available. Uh, you know, it would seem to me that maybe the next step is to take some kind of definitive inventory. I don't know that we want to try and assemble all of the stuff in one location just yet, but maybe that's something that has to be done at some point. Uh, I guess if there's stuff that we know is damaged and needs to go if it's small enough that we can just put it out a little at a time in the dumpster. Yeah, the chairs could go to the dumpster if they're damaged. And, and Chris said he could probably snatch some of them up too and make them more compact. You know, and some stuff that would go in the dumpster. But that was one of the things that we had talked about too is that if there was enough stuff might get a, a 20 or 30 yard dumpster box and it costs us a few hundred dollars but it'd be one way to get it all taken care of all at one time without trying to nickel and dime it. I guess I'd be hesitant to get rid of too much stuff that's still good because you know the health department's using those four desks plus I understand there's some upstairs and they need a total of six desks. So, yeah, they've been sitting upstairs for a while, but now they're going to get used, and so we don't have to put any money out. There's quite a few chairs upstairs also. There's different kinds of chairs, too. There's the executive type of chairs, cushions with nice armrests, and then there's chairs like back there. They run quite a wide, wide range. And, I guess, I guess if I can sum it up, I guess what we're saying is maybe we should try and at least collect all the, all the stuff that people think is unusable and, and start disposing of it. Yeah, anything that's garbage, yeah, I guess that would make sense to get rid of the garbage and then see where we're at. And if we have room to store stuff, 
get Matt and some of the more obsolete chairs or something, maybe get rid of them. Yeah, because I know at home if I get rid of something that I haven't used in a long time, then I need it. <laughs> sure. I think we should elect Lyle Barnes as the chairman. <laughs> we should select what is unusable and let him mark them that way and we'll give him permission to get rid of them. I mean, the management committee can go take over on that if you want. I second. Well, I think I, I, I work pretty good with Chris. So. Yeah, I think the the actual collecting it is something that most of that's going to fall on Chris to, yeah. to do. And uh, I would imagine you know, if he's got room in the shed over there, that probably is where he would take it initially and move to the shed so it can be evaluated. But on the other hand, if you want stuff that's obviously no good, you know, if you want to give him authority to immediately take that and dispose of it, I think that's fine. And if there's any stuff that has any question about it, he can take it to the shed if he's got room or you know, nowhere else where he wants to take it. Are you talking about these chairs going to the shed too or what? Oh, we, I don't know, when, you know, when we rearrange the room here, we just pile them up back there to make it expedient for the meeting and see how this arrangement is going to work. I think so far it's maybe not the best, but it's done its purpose or whatever. Um, but yes, if we could find some place else to store them temporarily, that might not be a bad idea because it doesn't look like there's going to be any change on the immediate horizon what's the health department estimate six weeks we'll be done with this <laughs> i have no estimate no estimate for you i think and i think charlie points out putting them out in the hallway probably long term isn't a good idea either although i think we have to have some in the hallway at least on the days when we have the full board meeting because we don't want everybody in here and it worked out well like at our last meeting when the sheriff came to address us he waited out in the hallway i'll call him in and, and that, that seemed to work pretty nice i thought so that kind of a, a situation or arrangement is probably something that we need to follow going forward because of the limitations of, of, of the room here But certainly the extra chairs that we have could go could go upstairs right now. It's, it's not a problem. But as far as these desks and so forth is concerned, somebody's going to have to make a decision now as to what is usable and what isn't usable. I remember a number of years back when the health department moved over here from, from their previous location. I was pretty actively involved in that move and there was one person that had a desk in their office and they were they were it wasn't the best but they were getting along just fine with it i went in there to pick the desk up to move it and it just completely collapsed in my hands i mean it was that bad and i don't know if we have similar things here i think Brian told me she had at least one desk her office that she thought was somewhere close to that or whatever but the point is somebody i guess has to try and make that distinction so uh, maybe maybe letting the management committee have that task would be a good thing um, we can get a hold of chris right after this meeting and have him to start the process I don't think we necessarily need to wait till the full board meeting since we already have made a motion to do this and it's already been approved by the full board to go ahead with the, with the project. We're just talking about how to implement it really. So, that makes sense? Yeah. I, but, I can get a hold of Chris after, I know you say he's been working over here on stuff last week or so he's going to be over in the next couple of days. Well, that's fine. I think when he has 
kind of available that they'd be able to get from. So we don't want to infringe on his normal duties or whatever. Okay. Um, I don't know if we need to make a motion to do all of what we just said or not. You know, I think we're putting together a plan. So if somebody wants to make a motion, maybe that might be a good thing to do. I'll make a motion to the management uh, committee uh, and Chris Drake put them to the furniture of what needs to be kept and what needs to be blown up. Yeah, no. What about the stuff that's obviously unusable? We go ahead and get rid of that right away. Get rid of that. I think we need to. Don't need that. I think Chris is capable of making that. I think we just need to do something. You got a chair nobody can sit in, or the armrest is broken <laughs> off, or you know, those kinds of things. Is usually what happens to a lot of. But I do think the things that are usable, and this doesn't need to be part of the motion, but I do think that things that are usable, if the county doesn't want them anymore, we can either make them available to the public or try and sell them or give them away or whatever. I don't think we should throw away good stuff. This is just a question of process on that. What, is there any procedure we have to go through I know when they cleaned out the shed, they had an auction, so that it was open bidding. Right. Uh, I mean, that was that was a lot of the stuff that came from the health department. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not something that we can just say, "Hey, does this church want it? it, it does it have to be open to everybody?" You know, or how does that have to work? Well, what happened when we had the auction was that we we tried to auction everything off. There were some items number of items nobody would bid on they were either put in a dumpster or set next to the dumpster after the auction ended and the next day they were all gone yeah people make them too <laughs> i mean you can take that for, for what it's worth as to how how that how that took place now i don't think that any things that that you were in in that situation i don't think there was anything that had a great value to it i just Probably. Don't want to get in trouble for right. giving it to somebody without and then somebody else say, well, we didn't have a chance that we were giving away county property. When we put stuff right out here by the dumpster, it's the same thing. Okay. There's times when you come back the next morning and it's gone. Like my hair is bad. You know, I mean, it's... <clears throat> It may be it may be somewhat more expedient just to just to, to put the stuff out there and I don't know if somebody happens to see it's there and takes it then because if you're gonna try and if you're gonna try and advertise throughout the whole county that here we have yeah. six chairs that somebody yeah, wants them right. or good shape I mean that's a big undertaking so anyway back to Barb made a motion is there a second to her motion. To send it to management. Yeah. I'll second it. All right, Mr. Six, now second. Is there any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion will pass. Next is the resolution on the 2021 calendar of meetings. <clears throat> I move to be adopted as written. Can it include what time of day or night we have the meetings? It has it on it. Has it? Every meeting starts at you 9 a.m. on a on. Tuesday. Did you want that meeting start? Oh, <coughs> I see it now. You're questioning the time of the meetings? No, I'm not now. I thought I see that. You like 9 a.m. meetings? Oh, yeah. I don't think about it, but I believe I do. Yeah, you think about it. <laughs> How about 859? Would that be better? I thought about it for about one, one second or two. You know that 9 a.m. meetings deviates from the county code. The county code says the meeting started at 905. I'm not going to quibble over five minutes. I don't care what you do. 
Okay, there's a motion to approve that resolution. Is there a second? I'll second. Very good, Mr. Paul. Second that motion. I'm not sure if we need to call a roll, but we will anyway, just to be sure we're all up and ready to go. Fair. Yeah. All. Yes. All. Yes. If not. Yes. Sure. Yep. Next, we have a resolution on designating the 2021 calendar of holidays to be observed. Our motion to approve that resolution. Mr. Balfour, is there a second? Second. Mr. Barron. I will point out there are two four day holidays next year one in February, Lincoln's birthday, and President's Day presents a four day weekend. And then the one at Thanksgiving is also a four day holiday. I always thought that. President's Day was on February 22nd, but I'm incorrect when I looked it up on the internet. There was somebody in the federal government, I think, designated it as February 15th now. So that's what it is. Is there any other further comments on the calendar? None. Would you call the roll, please, Amanda? Fair. Yes. All. Yes. 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 Sure. Yep. Okay. Next, we're going to go into executive session. So we need a motion to do that. I move we go into executive session for 5 ILCS 120 2 one Second. Second. This is all for second. Okay. Do we need to do the roll call for that? Yes. Barron? Yes. All? Yes. All for? Yes. Signal? Yes. Sure? Yes. Mr. Bard, you don't have to leave the room if you don't want to. Okay. You're on the, on the board. Okay. You can. 